Just a little while ago, I came across this wonderful, wonderful Regency period bookcase. Now, when I saw this, something inside of me said, this is special. So what is it that's so special about this bookcase? Well, it's Regency period, made between probably about 1815 and 1820. It's mahogany, and you can see that lovely rich mahogany colour all the way through there. But it's also got all the appliques and bandings in ebony. Ebony, a very hard, dense black wood. And when I had this, a friend said to me, do you know what? That is typical of the work of Tatum and Marsh. So I've done some research on them, but I'll come back to that later. So what we've got here is a bookcase that was made at the beginning of the 19th century and it comes in four parts. The cornice lifts off, you've got the top part, you've got the base and the pediment along the bottom there. It was made in four parts for ease of transportation from the workshops where it was made through to the home that it was intended for. And of course then it might not have been on the ground floor, they might have had the major apartments on the first floor quite often in those days. So it would have had to go up and down stairs. But what we've also got here is when you look at this, you'll see the figuring and the grain on this mahogany. It's what we call fiddleback mahogany. Very rare, very expensive, the prime mahogany at that time. Why? Well, it was used by the famous violin makers for the backs of the violins, hence fiddleback mahogany the very best of the best. So we're looking at something that must have been expensive to make in the first place, with all this ebony as well. And you'll see the ebony goes all the way around the tops, around these glazing bars, but also around the drawers and around the doors to the base as well. That's nice because it ties it all in. You can see the same design, the same motifs going one, two, three, all the way through. It's an important bookcase. It would have been in a good library. Now imagine, you'd been on the Grand Tour, you'd come back with a whole host of different objects that you'd collected. You'd need somewhere to keep them all. This was the sort of piece you would have had. But it might not have been just one on its own. You might have had a suite of these bookcases in your library, particularly if you had a big collection of artefacts that you'd collected. So one, of possibly several bookcases. Quality is what this is all about. And when I say that, there are little pointers that you come to about the quality. The handles on the drawers, they're not just normal stamped brass handles. These are gilt brass, solid knobs. And the drawers run beautifully smoothly. They're fabulously dovetailed all the way through and they work brilliantly. You also have in the top part the adjustable shelves and you can see these daggers going down to there. So the shelves just slide out and slide back in again and you'll notice that that stops there. Well of course it stops there because you couldn't very well get a book smaller than that back when this was made. And again up at the top, it doesn't go right the way up to the top because there'd be no point, because you couldn't put books in there if you only had an inch between the shelf and the top of the piece. Beautifully made, and you may well see, if you look closely, that the glazing here is rather crooked. It's bowed in places, it's got little bubbles in it, and that's because they couldn't actually make perfectly flat glass in those days. And glass has a tendency over the years when you get a pane of glass for it because it is still mobile to gradually move down so that your pane gets thicker at the bottom than it is at the top. So there we have a few little pointers on this and again in the base one shelf going right the way across beautifully made and in wonderful condition and the makers of this Tatum and Marsh they were fabulous makers. They made so much of the furniture for the royal family for George the fourth for the Royal Pavilion down in Brighton and of course when he became Prince Regent for Carlton House as well in London 
they supplied furniture and so often on these pieces many of which are still in the royal collection in Buckingham Palace, Windsor Castle and so on you'll see this combination of beautifully figured mahogany with ebony inlay and bandings. So there we have a bookcase made in about 1820 almost certainly by Marsh and Tatum. Now I did say I'd give you a little more information on Marsh and Tatum and you know one of the beauties of being in this business is that we've got our own very extensive reference library with hundreds of books all about English furniture and to be able to just take time out and if you like just research the pieces it's such fun and so very rewarding and we find that in this particular book the London Furniture Makers by Sir Ambrose Heal he lists Tatum and Bailey um, at 13 Mount Street, Grosvenor Square, from 1802 to 1817. But Tatum, Thomas and Marsh William, cabinet makers number 13 Mount Street, Grosvenor Square, principal cabinet makers to the Prince of Wales, later George IV, from 1795 onwards. They also supplied furniture for Carlton House and South Hall in Bedfordshire. And it refers to Clifford Smith's book on Buckingham Palace and the contents. So that's one of the reference books. But I think that to get an idea of how important these people were, we need to look into this one, which is the Dictionary of English Furniture Makers from 1660 to 1840. Now, this book is remarkable and it, it lists a number of different companies because Marsh and Tatum, Tatum and Marsh, they changed their name several times and they were succeeded by Elwood, Marsh and Bailey. It was Elwood, George and Marsh, succeeded by Elwood, Marsh and Bailey, Elwood, Marsh and Tatum, Marsh and Tatum, Tatum and Bailey, Tatum, Bailey and Saunders, Bailey and Saunders, Edward Bailey, Mount Street near Charles Street. And they were there from 1774 to 1840. And it lists a whole screed here of the work that they carried out for some of the most eminent people, including the royal family, during that period. Uh, the firm was associated from the 1780s with the group of distinguished craftsmen working for the Prince of Wales and other important patrons like Samuel Whitbread II. It's not clear who provided the designs for their furniture. Henry Holland was certainly closely involved in the work for the Prince of Wales at Carlton House and at Brighton and for his other patrons. And so it goes on for page after page after page. So these were important makers. They were at the very top of the tree, if you'll pardon the pun when talking about wooden furniture. And then there's also this wonderful book, Carlton House, The Past Glories of George IV's Palace. This was the catalogue of an exhibition that was held in the Queen's Gallery at Buckingham Palace. And in here there's frequent re references to Marsh and Tatum, Tatum and Marsh, um, Henry Holland, Carlton House, all the different pieces that were there at that time and were included in the exhibition. So we have a lot of literature that we can refer to when we say that the bookcase was almost certainly made by Marsh and Tatum at that period, 1815 to 1820. And I'm sure that if I had time, I'd be able to find a dozen other references as well. Thank you.